You're not diligent when it comes to building wealth. You are everything, but you're impatient, you're emotional, you're unintelligent. And I'm not saying that to speak bad of you. We got to increase our intelligence on finances so that we can pivot from being wicked and slothful to abundant and prosperous. So the rate heights, this, they represent. What do they represent? The cost of money being borrowed, point blank, period. This is where rate heights matter. This is why they matter, because the rates represent the cost of money. This is, this is important. Listen to me. Listen to me well. All right, let's go a little further. From that, who's borrowing the money? So remember, why do rate heights matter? Why do rates matter? Not heights. Why do rates matter? Because this is the cost of borrowing money everywhere. Who's borrowing the money? Companies, the government, and individuals. Companies through loans for new factories, governments through bonds, and individuals through mortgages and houses. This is, this is important for me. Then next, rates, uh, raising interest rates equals is more now expensive to borrow money. So if it becomes more expensive to borrow money, who does that essentially fall on at the end of the day? The consumer. Why? Because companies are going to cost a lot for them to borrow money, but what they're going to do? They're going to pass that off in the what? The form of what? Pricing. That's why you're going to always hear the Fed say our number one goal is price stability. Man, I need y'all to get this. All right. The government would then issue bonds. Today we had a three-year bond auction where I think about $88 billion got sold off. So that means about $88 billion people borrowed or that the government borrowed, right? This is why houses now, this is important. So interest rates, rising interest rates equals more expensive to borrow money. One, higher debt to service it, two, lower revenues, um, and then when we cross it over, you're spending more just to repay the debt, you're spending less on services and goods. All right, what does that mean, Trap? It means it's going to cost us more to service the debt, which is now why America is paying almost a billion dollars a day just to service the $35 trillion in debt that we owe. Let that make sense. America now has $35 trillion in debt. It is now costing America $1 billion a day to service that. Okay, who does that fall on? It falls on us. How does that now happen into the economy? Well, this is when people can't afford stuff. The prices of everything has gone up. Why? Because interest rates are still what? High. So this is important. Well, why else is it important, Trap? Because now... People are spending more money on repaying the debt, not even the entire debt. Remember, anytime you're paying debt, a lot, the big portion of the debt that you always pay off will always be what? The interest on it. So if you're paying a house note, I had to look at that. Like my house note, I ain't gonna say the price of it right now, but literally, I'm like, I'm about to pay the house off. Cause I'm, I don't, I'm, what the hell no? That's why they say if you can make a couple extra payments a year, on the principal, it helps it. Why? Because majority of the note will always be on interest, on anything you pay, on anything you pay. Anytime you get a loan on anything, the majority of the loan is on. That's why when you get a house, it really don't take you long to pay off a house. But what happens is they stretch it out for 30 years because now for the the majority of that payment is going on interest. It don't take you that. If you just paid the house note itself, you could pay it off in no time. It don't take you 30 years. But because you're paying the interest on it, that's why it take you 30 years. And when you start saying, nope, I'm going to pay two, three extra payments a year, they're like, wait a minute, hold on. Like, why would you do that? Don't do that. Don't get smart with the money. You want to pay it off all at once. Why? Who told you that financial IQ? Where you get that from? Be, even with a car, because why? It doesn't do them any good to loan you that type of money if you're going to pay it off in a year. They didn't make no money on it. If you paid a five-year car note off in one year or two years, they ain't really make no money on it. Actually, you were not a great product to them. But on the second side, it's going to look good on your credit report 
that you paid it off. I remember I was about to buy something. I was going to buy a car maybe a couple years ago. And I was like, man, I'm going to buy it and then I'm going to pay it off in a year. And he was like, ah. The man was like, nah, don't do that. I was like, what you mean don't do that? He was like, nah, wait like two, I'm like, I don't wait no two, three years. He was like, do it for like 24 months and then, man, I'm paying off in a year. You feel me? Why? Because they don't accumulate enough interest on you when you pay stuff off fast. But it, it looks well on your credit report, but you don't, you're not a good consumer. You're not a good product for what they're servicing. And I hope that made sense to everybody. All right. So what happens is when you when you buy something, it, they're calculating. So you go buy a house. You go buy a house. So you go buy a house, I say, for a million dollars. The minute you get that, the first thing coming to play is what's your credit score? The reason why the credit score is important, because they can say, OK, well, we don't got to charge them. We can give them a low interest rate. But now we get to calculate how much we get to make off them in this 30 years. Right. And really and truly, if we really want to be serious, the ultimate goal is for you to default on it so that they can take the house from you and then resell it, hopefully at a higher price, without having to sit on it too long. And then you get a bad credit score, which means now to get something else is going to cost you more. This is, how this, this is how it's set on. This is how it's set up. So it behooves you. Come on, Jose. It behooves you not to increase your financial IQ, but then also not teaching your kids, your cousins, your auntie, your grandma, your cousin. It behooves you not to increase it and then teach it because if you don't teach it, then the opportunities that you do not take advantage of become the adversity that the next generation has to face. So it is important that you get your financial IQ up. So this is why they tell you your home is an asset. I'll be honest with you. And people are going to fight me for this. It's not an asset until you have 100% ownership of it. As long as you paying for it, it is the bank's asset because you don't own it. It is an asset, but it's not your asset until you own it, because once you own it, now all of that equity within it belongs 100 percent to you. Until you do that, it is an asset for the bank because they can take it from you and give it right to the next person. Essentially, they've double and triple dip on one house. That is classic American wealth building. All right. So go a little further. Now, watch this. New bonds create higher interest rates and they become more attractive. Why? Because every time the government puts out more bonds, that means what? They've printed more money. Remember this. 79% of the money in existing now did not exist 10 years ago. Think about that. Also, 80% of the money that's in existing now is digital. 80% of the money that is in existence right now is digital, meaning it's digital on the screen, but it's not realistic. And we need to understand that. Which is another reason why we don't need to be what? Emotionally tied to money because it ain't even real. It's the asset that you buy with the money that's tangible. The ownership of the stock is tangible. The ownership of the property is tangible. The ownership in the business, in the products that the business produce is tangible. The money perceived value is what people get caught up in. So when you look at your screen and you see you got such and such amount of money in the bank, it's just a digital reminder to the bank more than it is a representation for you because the bank got to keep track of how much money they owe you because their job is to lend money out to people so they can get interest payments. That's why they don't got your money in the bank. If you go try to get over $20,000, they're like, ah, we don't got that in here right now. What you mean? It's a whole bank. I've been putting money in for years, but it ain't in. We already gave it to Ashan. And then once we gave it to Ashan, he went and did something, and we had to get that money. 
Money has to keep moving, which is also why the Bible says you are wicked and slothful if you take the money and bury it in the ground. But it doubles right back and tell you in Proverbs 10 and 4, diligent hands build wealth. Diligent, the act of consistently doing something until you get it right. Diligence. You're not diligent when it comes to building wealth. You are everything, but you're impatient, you're emotional, you're unintelligent. And I'm not saying that to speak bad of you. We got to increase our intelligence on finances so that we can pivot from being wicked and slothful to abundant and prosperous. And that's what we do here in Trap and Tuesdays. We here to make you money multipliers, money printers. But in order to do that, you can't wish up on it. You can't hope up on it. You can't get lucky up on it. You got to intake the information, digest the information, and then let the information work in real time. The information got to work in real time. It ain't working in real time for you because you ain't applying it. You keep trying to chase the next trade, chase the next run up, chase the next Come up. How can I flip this trap? I don't know how to flip that. Every time I try to flip something, I got went to jail. I know how to grow it. I know how to nurture it. I know how to make better money decisions. I know how to store it. I don't know how to flip it. So let's go a little further here. Profits and revenue. So what happens? New bonds pay higher interest rates. Then what happens? Prices of existence bonds fall. Why do prices fall? Because new bonds take away value from what's existing already. But why does America keep having to print new bonds? Because they need more money. Why? Because they're greedy. And the country, the people in the country only going to follow what they see. America got bad credit. So guess what? 75% of people in America got what? Bad credit. America don't got no money management. So what 80% of the people in America do? Don't got money management. So at some point, you got to do what? Develop your own perspective around money. And I wrote some down just because I wanted us to see that. I, I wrote this down. You cannot solve today's complex financial situations with yesterday's remedial answers. Somebody say, how do new bonds protect except uh affect previous bonds the same way new money being printed make the old the new money make the old money worth less that's what bonds do every time they issue bonds that mean they don't create new money out of thin air when they create new money out of thin air the old bonds are affected just like your money is affected just like the money worth right now ain't worth it done lost 25 percent of its value since what the 2020 the same dollar in the pandemic is a dollar and 35 cent right now. That's a 35 percent increase. 35 percent on one dollar don't seem like a lot, but put it over a hundred dollars. Now it's going to increase. Put it over a thousand dollars. Now it's going to increase. Put it over a million dollars. That means when I was young, your mama used to say you put a million dollars in the bank, you live off the interest. I, it ain't working right now. You put a million in the bank right now, you got nine hundred and ninety nine thousand tomorrow. And then what happens? Lower profits equal what? Stock prices fall. I say all that to say that. If you don't do nothing else tonight, I want you to come right back to this part, screenshot it, look at your paper. Okay, Trap, you know, here's the rant, but this is why the rant makes sense. This is why it's going to make sense to y'all. This is the catalyst that we're looking for moving forward. We are looking for rate hikes. Patreon, I know y'all mad at me a little bit for this rant because I told y'all earlier Today or yesterday, like, yo, I'm not mad. I'm not happy about nothing that's going on until I see the Fed say we hiking rates by at least 50%. Because now they got to aggressively hike rates because now we are at a cataclysmic moment in the economy. 